Uh, so let's look at uh, identity-based encryption and how we could use that to be able to uh, generate a shared key or a shared secret between Bob and Alice so that Eve can't determine what that shared secret is. And this will use uh, the Golang library to be able to implement uh, the uh, key arrangement. So with identity-based encryption, uh, we have a different type of method to our normal PKI type uh, infrastructure that we get. Normally with PKI, we'll have a public key and a private key. And this defines our key pair. Uh, in order to um, to sign things, we sign things with a private key and then prove them with our public key. To encrypt, we might uh, encrypt with someone's public key and then decrypt with the private key. And with PKI, what happens is that uh, we distribute the public key on a digital uh, certificate. So in this way, if, uh, say, Alice signs something with a private key, she then distributes the uh, the public key on the digital certificate, which is signed by a trusted entity such as Trent. The problem that we have is that uh, in some systems, uh, it's actually quite difficult to get a, a digital certificate on a, a device, and it becomes quite complex where you would have to create digital certificates for each device. So especially in things like large scale IoT, uh, it's not really a scalable infrastructure. So one method that's proposed is what's called uh, identity-based encryption. And with identity-based encryption, we generate the uh, public key based on some attribute or attributes of the identity of the entity that we're uh, dealing with. And we do this through a trust authority or a key granting authority. And the advantage of using a trust authority is that it can manage the circle of trust to make sure that it manages the keys that are responsible uh, for the whole infrastructure and make sure that that's secure. It can also handle each of the connections that happen and make sure that each of those is secret and that possibly it can keep a key in escrow if required. So with identity-based encryption, we use something about Bob's identity. If Alice wants to send something to Bob, then rather than having to get the digital certificate or Bob's public key, she basically just generates something from Bob's identity to create the, uh, uh, the, the public key. Typically, the, she then takes a hash of that, so she might have several entities, so perhaps that's Bob's email address. She take a hash of that and that becomes Bob's uh, public key. She will then encrypt for Bob and Bob will use his private key. The private key is generated through the uh, key granting authority. In this case, the key granting authority generates a, a, a secret value, S, a scalar value. Bob's private key becomes this public key multiplied by this S value. And this is an elliptic curve point, and this is the multiplier for that elliptic curve point. And it's not possible to, uh, for us to be able to find the value of S that's been used, even though um, we know the private key. So Bob will then have uh, access to that uh, secret key and will be able to uh, decrypt uh, the, the content uh, for its, its being encrypted with his public key, which is his uh, ID. So we're going to use pairing cryptography to be able to create this key sharing. So what we want to do is to get Bob and Alice to communicate openly in the same way that we have with Diffie Hellman. And at the end of it, they'll have the same shared secret or the typically the same shared key. And we'll do this with identity-based encryption. So the identity of Bob and the identity of Alice uh, and with elliptic curve and also with pairing cryptography. So with pairing cryptography, we have two elliptic curves, uh, G1 and G2. And we create a pairing to them to create uh, another point on a curve, G GT. 
The pairing between them has special properties that we'll see. On our curve, we have a base point. We'll call that uh, U and that one V. And often what we do is that uh, we add U X times to get X U here. So X U is a point on the elliptic curve. And all we do is we keep adding U X times until we get this point here. Same again over here. We might have a value of N and that becomes V uh, N. This is normally the secret key uh, or the secret value that, that we have within our key. The public key becomes this and the secret key is that value that we've added a number of times. Okay, so this is the G1, G1 curve and this is the G2 uh, curve. And with pairing, we have a function, a pairing function E. Uh, often you'll see it with a little dot above it here. And it has a special function because if we we use uh, if we use let's get rid of that if we multiply uh, this point u uh, by a so that's adding u a times and we have b v so v is on the other curve we have a pairing uh, function that gives us a result for that. Because of the attributes of the pairing function, it is then possible to say that that is equal to that. So we can change the A and the B round and we'll still get the same value. And actually that's also the same as that pairing function. So if I took a point and multiplied it by A and then B on this G1, then and then paired it with V over here, I'd get the same result as I have here. And then another uh, property is that that can become uh, AB there. So we're going to use this property with identity-based encryption to be able to create a key sharing, authenticated key sharing. In core Diffie-Hellman, it's quite difficult to create the uh, authenticated uh, tunnel, but in this case, we'll make sure that we know the identity of both Bob and Alice, and they are proven before we can uh, actually create uh, the shared key. So it's a trusted authenticated uh, key sharing method that we're going to get. Okay, so here's the method here. So we have our, our key generation center, which is going to generate a value of S for this uh, connection. So Bob doesn't have to contact Alice. The key generation center will generate the value of S and then that will be shared between uh, Bob and Alice. So there's the KDC and there's Bob. He gets the value of S and Alice will also get the value of S then. So next, uh, uh, Bob works out uh, Alice's public key by taking her identity, such as her email address, her IP address or something, creates a hash of it. Alice will work out uh, Bob's public key by taking a hash of his ID. We then have a secret key for Alice, which is her identity uh, value. And this is a point, so I should say, uh, these are points on the curve. So we hash and then we put the point onto whichever curve that we need to. So it's a hashing of the point onto the curve of, for the, the identity. So then uh, Alice's private key will become S, the secret, times uh, QA, an identity, uh, public key value. And then for Bob, his uh, secret key will become S times his identity. Now Alice does a pairing uh, of her secret key and Bob's public key. And Bob does the same, but he uses his secret key and Alice's public key. They then should end up with the same shared uh, key uh, value then. And this works because we can take the pairing and that is equal to S times QA here at this value. 
and then we can flip the S over here. And we can then end up with the value here that we had there. Okay, so using the special function, uh, both Bob and Alice will end up with the same uh, thing. Okay, so all that uh, that uh, they have to do is to get this secret value, and they don't have to communicate with each other, but they will both be able to create the same key or the same shared secret uh, from that based on the identity of, of either side. So let's look at the Golang uh, implementation for this. So we'll generate a, a secret value here. Uh, so this is the order of the curve. That's the maximum value that we can have on an elliptic curve. So we'll use the full space to generate the secret S. We then hash to give us these values here. We're just using SHA256 in there. And then we take this hash value and we map it onto the curve. So this is mapping it onto the G1 uh, curve there. And then we create Alice's secret key by multiplying the value of X with this point on the elliptic curve for her uh, identity. Okay, so let's look at the code. Okay, so there's what we saw before. Now Bob, uh, Bob's identity value gets mapped onto the elliptic curve. We multiply by S to give his uh, private key. We then do the mapping for uh, Alice in this case, the, gen the key that she will generate, and then the key that Bob will generate uh, there. Then what we'll do in the end is we'll just check that they're the same value and hopefully uh, the keys will match. Okay, so here's an example here. So we'll just give uh, Bob's identity as that, and there's Alice's identity. So we're going to hash these onto the curve, and then we're going to do a pairing to see if it works, and it does. Okay, so you can see here there's the secret, there's our hashing. Uh, so in this case, we're hashing Alice's identity onto the, Q, the G1 curve. Uh, you can recognize the G1 curve just as this single point here and this gets hashed the, the Bob's identity gets hashed onto the G2 curve if you look in the code here you'll see that uh, that's the difference here we're mapping uh, Alice's identity onto G1 and then multiplying uh, her the point her identity on the curve by S G1 and for Bob's identity we map that onto the G2 curve and then we use the G2 multiply to give us that okay and then in the end we should hopefully get them to to, to match okay so there's our sample run that, that we get and hopefully in the end we end up with the secrets that are matching and the two pairings end up the same so as I said, this is getting mapped to the G1 curve, this is getting matched to the G2 curve, and then the pairing themselves gets mapped onto this G2, and we end up with the same uh, signature here. The uh, Bob's and Alice's identity uh, are, are doing the mapping. They get hashed, the hash value then maps it onto, onto the curve, and there's the secret value that, that they would actually use. Okay, so that's been an outline of identity-based encryption or authentication uh, using uh, a key uh, agreement with, uh, with identities.